If you play Wright Patterson Mahjong and you like playing in tournaments, you know you're on a timer and quick decision making is key, especially during the Charleston. I like to do an exercise that I call Charleston Sprints that helps me practice with that decision making. If you have a set at home, give it a try yourself. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. Click the bell when you do, that way you won't miss anything. Let's do some Charleston sprints and work on building some confidence. I think if I make decisions in under two minutes, that would be a really good guideline for a, a advanced player. For intermediate, let's say three minutes, and for beginners, four minutes. And then push yourself into the other thresholds if you want to improve. So let's get 14 tiles for the dealer. And we'll make the smock Charleston. We're gonna roll for prevailing. I rolled an eight. If I can get those dice. We'll put up a four on the dice so that we know that north is prevailing. Okay. We're gonna do three sprints. Laps one, three, and five will be the sprints, and then laps two and four will be set up. Here we go. Okay, we've got a mixture here. We have two, three, four, seven, nine, two, five, seven, eight, two, nine. I'm thinking maybe we could try a hopscotch hand. Hopscotch hands are mixed suits. So let's do Let's do Heavenly Hopscotch. Oh, yeah, yeah, here we go. So let's pass a North, and then let's pass, oh, let's mix it up. Let's pass these three right here. I'm thinking a Hopscotch mixed suit hand. Okay, we got a two. We don't need pairs, we need singles. Okay, there's a one, three, seven, nine, five, seven, two, eight, yeah, that's not gonna help. Two, four, maybe we should switch to different suits here. Two, four, dots, cracks. Oh boy, maybe, let's pass these three. Maybe we should play little one, five, or five, seven, nine, or something. Let's pass these three. Seven. And then we've got discards. Okay, so this was a hot mess. I'm thinking one nine three five seven three seven nine. I'm thinking little one five seven. Let's just look at it because the hopscotch didn't come in with the two four six eight. You need either one, three, five, seven, nine in two suits with two, four, six, eight and a third, or two, four, six, eight in two suits with one, three, five, seven, nine and a third, and it just didn't come together. There is a hand called little one, five, seven, nine, number 50 on page 23. One, five, sevens and nines with either ones or nines. So yeah, this was, this was a terrible Charleston. We have one, five, seven, and then a pair of either ones or nines. This was really, really horrible. I think I would regroup completely and pick the greatest suit and recover. So we have an equal number of bams and dots. Let's see, do we have any double number potential? Three, seven. I think I would try for double numbers maybe. Here's a three, seven, three, seven. At least there are more tiles there. I think what I would do is go for double numbers, hold the dots and the bams and see if drawing comes in, get rid of the ones and nines, try to recover because that mixed suit did not come in. But we did it in under one minute, or under two minutes, so I guess that's a consolation. Let's try again. Oh, 
Okay, let's see if we can do better this time. Okay, we have six, nine, just two dots, four, six. We've got a pair here of fours. I think little two, four, six, eight. Look at all the evens that we have here. Two, four, six, eight. I think that's a really, really good start. Let's break this up. Uh, let's pass a, a nine so we're not left with like numbers. Two, four, six, eight. That's what we're looking for. We got a six. Let's pass these three. We got a two. And we have tiles we can pass right here. Four. And we have three discards. Okay, this was much better. Look at these results. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. So we have five discards because what we need here is another two or an eight to pair up. But we have a pung, we could pung, pung, pung. All we need is a pair of either twos or eights and this hand is done. So there's a gap, but five discards, it's pretty solid. I would be pretty confident with this hand. If you would have done something different, write sprint two and what you would have done differently. We'll do this one more time. Okay, oh, let's roll. So I rolled a seven. Seven would be west. Okay, we've got a couple dragons and some winds here. And we do have bands. Oh, there's a pair of sixes. Okay, I'm thinking maybe we could play Eleanor. Four, six, seven. This would be a number hand. I'll read it to you later. But I would hold, let's see, let's hold the honors. Maybe we could play a hand of honors. Let's discard these three. There's a dragon and a south. Okay, so I'm thinking we should switch to honors maybe. Although Susie Q south and green maybe we can give up on let's pass these three we could always switch back to hands of honors if we do well there's a south and a white and an eight uh, we don't need the eight let's give up the one pass those three okay pa lap Okay, so here we have, I think it's pretty strong with Suzy Q. Um, we have four, six, all we need is another seven crack and we will be set for Suzy Q. I'll read that to you. So we have five discards. I think what I would do though is discard the seven bam first and hold on to the honors because honor hands are higher score. Even though Suzy Q is a double limit hand, so that's a nice hand. It's on page 22, number 41. Three different numbers punged in each suit. Pung of Souths with a pair of greens. We got the pung there. All we need is a pair of green. Pung, pung, pair up the seven, and that hand would be set. So that was a pretty strong result, I think. If you would have done something different, like maybe go for the honors, uh, let me know. Let's see here. Yeah, I think I made it. So sprint one, one minute, 41 seconds. Sprint two, one minute, nine seconds. Sprint three, one minute, 21. I made it. I think a couple of those were pretty, you know, bleak results though. So I think I need to practice some more. And I really would like to keep an eye out on dragons because dragons and winds, of course, are used in date hands and transitions. Those are two categories that I tend to forget about. And there are some great hands in there, especially the date hands. There are some double limit hands in there. So don't forget, if you get 
tiles with lots of dragons and winds, think about transitions and date hands. If you have a set at home, give this exercise a try and let me know how it goes for you. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the bell when you do, that way you get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight of the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next Charleston Sprints for Wright Patterson Mahjong, may all your picks be keepers.